Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Manual 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, we'll solve some problems dealing with the concept of order of operations. It's the continuation of the work that we did yesterday. These problems you will find, these are exercises that are given, practice problems as they call them, on page number 138. Let's take a look at them, shall we? If at the end of the video, after watching it, you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by simply sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at the first one. Problem number one. The problem number one has four parts to them, and they do not actually enumerate them in any way. So uh, we'll we'll simply call them A, B, C, D, just to just to just to keep them separate. Do you understand? One, two, three. There are four of them. A, B, C, D. Let's do that then. So there's first one here, number A. Now, the, before we begin here, before we begin here, before we do any work at all, and I wrote down the problem as it appears in the book. This thing that you see here is a misprint. Correct it before we start the work, that's a misprint. That's not what they meant. Instead of a multiplication sign, they need to they, they meant to put a minus sign. It's supposed to be a minus sign, not a multiplication sign. So fix it first before we get going. It's a minus sign. Otherwise you're gonna get all sorts of weird things. So let's, let's get going. So the very first thing we do is a parenthesis that appears first here, the order of operation, parenthesis, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. I'm sure you've heard of something called PEMDAS, which is a mnemonic device that we use to help us remember the proper order of operation. So we do the parenthesis first. We end up with six plus eight times 12 minus, 12 minus nine is three. And now we have addition and multiplication. Multiplication comes before addition. So we do multiplication next. So we end up with 6 plus 24, which gives us the grand total of 30, is the correct answer. Part B. Part B says 14 minus 5 divided by 7 minus 4. 14 minus 5 is just 9. We do this, this parenthesis first and then that parenthesis, 7 minus 4 is 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Very simple, very straightforward, nothing to them. Let's do part C. Part C. C says 7 times 4 plus 8 divided by 4 minus 3 times 6. Okay, now this is where we have to pay attention. This is where we pay to attention. Now, we can do it in baby step, every, every single thing in one step at a time, or we can do few things together. I'm going to do the baby steps first and then I'm going to show you uh, how to tackle the situation where uh, well, we'll see. We'll see in a second. So first, we see multiplication here. Let's take care of that first. 7 times 4 is 28. And plus 8 divided by 4 minus 3. Now we see the division there. Multiplication and division. Let's do that first. Let's do that next rather. 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2. Minus 3 times 6. And the next step, we have a multiplication here. 28 plus 2 minus 18. And now we do, we do it out, 28 plus 2 is 30, 30 minus 18, 30 minus 20 would have been 10, so it's going to be 12. The answer is going to be 12. There is nothing wrong with it. If you want to tackle it that way, that's fine. But here's what I'm talking about. You see? We have three things going on here. We have, we have multiplication here, we have a division here, and we have a multiplication here. So, don't do it on your own, on your own at home if you think they're gonna, if that you're going to hurt yourself. Only if you feel comfortable. Do you understand? As you notice, 
doing this, to, this multiplication 7 times 4 has no bearing at all as to what happens afterwards. Similarly, doing this division of 2 has no impact on this or that or anything else. It's just by itself. And similarly, that was by itself 18. You see, just 18 just followed through. And this 8 divided by, 8 divided by 4 just followed through at 2. So we, what we could have done is, the answer is 12. What we could have done is this, this. Instead of doing it in all baby steps, because we're dealing with multiplication and division, three situation of multiplication and division, and they have the same priority. We talked about it yesterday. They have the same priority. We could have just gone all together. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 8 divided by 4 is 2, minus 3 times 6 is 18. There we go. 28 plus 2 is 30, 30 minus 18 right here. All done. Part D. Part D. D says 50 minus 2 times 7 over 6 plus 4 times 3. And when we have a situation like this, when we are given a fraction like this, we should treat the numerator, the quantity that appears in the numerator, and the quantity that appears in the denominator as two separate problems. Do them as, as if they were given as two separate problems. Figure out the, what the value of the numerator is, what the value of the denominator is, and then at the end just put stick one, one, one on top of the other. So let's do that, shall we? So if you look at the first part, we have a subtraction and multiplication. Obviously multiplication comes first. Let's do that first. We could have continued there, but I don't want to erase this thing. So we'll have 50 minus 2 times 7 is 14. And 50 minus 14, 50 minus 10 is 40. We're not subtracting 10, we're subtracting 40. So instead of 40, it's going to be 36. Subtra subtract 4 more. So that's the top part. Let's do the bottom part. 6 plus 4 times 3 is 12. And 6 plus 12 is 18. We end up with 18. I'm going, to, I'm going to move my equal sign down here because it bothers me. It annoys me. It looks ugly. It looks more elegant when it's lined up properly. There you go. Now we just have to reduce it. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 3 has how many 2's? 3 has 1 2's. After we take away 2 from the 3, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8 2's. 8 2's are 16. Since we divide it top by 2, we must divide the bottom by 2. And 18 has 9 twos. There we go. Oh, I see a 9, I see 18. Let's divide top and bottom by 9, because we know 9 twos are 18. Now, if you're still having trouble with the language, this is what I'm saying. What we just did here, what I just said is, because we know that 9 twos are 18. 9 twos are 18. That's what we just said. 9 twos are 18. Or, we could have argued the same thing in this manner. We have 18 here, we have 9 here. We could have said that 2 9s are 18. Instead of saying it like this, we know that 2 9s are 18. Same thing. Same exact thing. In the first instance, what we're saying is that 9 2s are 18. What we're saying is that 9 2s are 18. In the second, in the second articulation, we're saying 2 9s are 18. 2 9s are 18. It's the exact same thing. So that's it. The answer is 2 to this part. So that's the end of the first problem, problem number one. And then, then they go on to give us four more problems there, two, three, four, and five, in case you had figuring that part out on your own, which we'll do tomorrow. So the next four problems we'll do tomorrow. Why, you ask? Well, there is a very good reason for it, a technical reason for it, which is that I have lazy derriere. Do you understand? We'll do them tomorrow. We'll meet again. If you wish to get hold of me, you can get hold of me by sending prep at iCloud.com. I have never figured out why Americans find it less offensive and more acceptable to say the same thing by using a French word but not an English word. YouTube would have trouble if I were to say lazy, you know what, but if you use the French word it's quite alright. So, to the lazy derriere. Bye now.